See, branding is all about differentiation. You know, there is a huge clutter in the market. So how does your brand stand out? And I think that is the purpose of branding and storytelling. So as a late entrant in the grading field, you know, uh, others have advantage. So how do you intend to uh, brand yourself, stand out from the crowd, as well as help the retailers uh, come up with stories? So that's an excellent question. And first of all, we are the only technology company that is uh, involved in time grading. All the rest of the companies are gemological grading labs. True, true. Uh, so that is first of all, I think, one of the big differences. We're a technology company. We believe that grading can and should be done through technology. Um, and, and we believe it's better. And that's what we're uh, doing uh, today, proving to clients why technology can do grading in a superior way than it can be done through manual processes that have been done over the last 50 or, or more years in grading. So that's the first one. The second thing is that we believe in differentiation, as you said, branding differentiation. So we don't necessarily see ourselves as necessarily being in the front. We don't want to create the next GIA. Uh, we believe that we want to strengthen and uh, support the client's brand. So you'll see that in our grading reports, there's a lot of customization to the client's needs, uh, fitting its brand, its look and feel, what kind of information they need, what stories that brand can be. And so there's a lot of flexibility within what we do. Uh, think of it like a, a little bit of a puzzle that we create for the client. So we work with the retail client. We first want to understand what is he about, what is his brand messaging. And then we can see how, what kind of information that the customer needs, what, how to structure the report, and what the kind of things can provide emphasis on why his diamond is different or better, or, or and what story that diamond tells. So we're really focused on creating Think of like customized solutions for the retailer, so to empower his brand rather than us overpowering with our brand. That's an excellent initiative, and I would like to share my learnings over the period of time. If you see, uh, mine diamonds category has uh, grown only on the basis of category market. They always depend on uh, mine ups. The DBS will do category marketing, or other miners will do and they want to piggyback on that. So, uh, and on the other hand, when you look at the trading aspect, uh, people don't really buy diamonds. They buy GI certificate. Why? Because the, there is no branding. There are poor brands. What I observed uh, from uh, my readings is that you are doing an excellent job because you are co-branding. Your, your brand suddenly takes a backseat when you are helping the retailers to come up uh, with their own brand and story, which is a, which is a really good thing. Yeah. You know, if we were again to sit in the front seat, as you, as you call it, uh, we become a, a replacement to the standard commoditized grading reports of today. Mm -hmm. We don't want to commoditize diamonds. We think that once you commoditize diamonds, it, 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 the only aspect they now becomes price. If I walk into a store and I see two diamonds with the same exact same grading report in two different stores, what is the difference between these two diamonds? Therefore, we don't see that uh, we want to replace that, be a better grading report. We want to also provide value to our customer and to our client so that he can differentiate himself. Uh, the grading report is, is, is a tool. It's not uh, an objective. You're not selling a grading report. You're selling a diamond. You're not selling the product. grading report is, is just a tool to help the retailer uh, explain uh, what about his diamond, tell the story of his diamond, and provide data about his diamond, which again has an impact on the price of the diamond and so on and so forth. So that's where we see ourselves as uh, different from other grading labs. It's not just another piece of paper that mostly commoditizes uh, diamonds today because it makes two diamonds that are different at a different retail exactly the same in terms of the same grading report. And that's what we wanted to move away from. Very interesting. So I was going through your product portfolio. I came across the loop. So how is it different than other groups and what is the speciality of the loops? So there's basically one main speciality which we have a patent on basically creating a virtual three-dimensional uh, image of uh, the polished diamond. Uh, most of the imagery solutions today basically rotate in 2D, uh, showing the diamond rotating on a rotating table. Uh, whereas we basically create a virtual uh, three-dimensional imagery of the diamond that you actually rotate in the direction. And that's the uniqueness of our solution. Again, there are a lot of great solutions out there for imagery um, with different advantages and different advantages, but what makes our solution unique is we're able to create a three-dimensional image of uh, the diamond as if you're holding the diamond in your hand and you can actually turn it around in any direction. Okay. Very interesting. 
So that loop uh, in terms of cost, is it uh, cost we, we look at it, we look at the, the loop as part of the information that can be provided as part of the grading report. Mm -hmm. Again, to create that experience with the consumer that he can now look at his diamond, because holding a diamond uh, by consumers is very difficult. They generally are very small, they don't know how to hold it, they don't know how to look at it. The 3D loop enables you to basically look at the diamond virtually uh, uh, on a digital representation um, and be able to interact with it and turn it around in different directions to see the diamond. And so we see that as part of the information that we provide to the retailer that can provide it to the consumer, especially when you're talking about digital uh, and, uh, platforms, uh, website, uh, internet, and so on, you want to be able to show your product. And so that gives the retailer the ability to actually engage with the, the consumer and let the consumer interact with the, the, the polished diamond that is in his jewelry or his So uh, coming to this uh, laser marking on the girdle, there, are, there is a school of thought that it is not foolproof and it can be tampered with. So there are new technologies uh, which uh, Forever Mark or other companies have tried and it also forms a basis of storytelling, something called stealth marking. Yeah. So what is your opinion? Are you going to offer some services? Maybe? Yes. Uh, again, there are a lot of different, as you say, uh, inscription has its loopholes. You can remove an inscription, you can inscribe a number of the same inscriptions on, on different diamonds. So definitely inscriptions have a lot of value, but there are loopholes. And, and definitely today there are a lot of different solutions out there in the market that come to uh, solve this issue. Uh, one of them, as you mentioned, is uh, a subsurface inscription. So it's then very much more difficult to remove it because you need to polish it. And you can watch it only from yeah. a loop. You can, yes, you have those that you can see with the loop, but then they impact the clarity. So that's a disadvantage if you have a, 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 the ability to see with the loop. You have uh, subsurface inscriptions that you cannot see with the loop. Uh, but then again, and uh, it's difficult to see it, but then they don't impact the clarity. Mm -hmm. We actually believe in a different uh, direction of not necessarily marking the diamond, but creating a digital fingerprint of the diamond. So we have technology today that create a digital fingerprint of the diamond, uh, similar to a physical fingerprint, that we create that digital fingerprint, we store that uh, fingerprint like you would store your information about the fingerprint, that passport like control. Like the police department. Uh, yes. uh, passport control, when you leave the country every time you uh, put your, your hand or your eye, it depends on what country, mm -hmm. uh, and it checks who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So we believe that that is a much more effective way. Uh, you don't need to mark the diamond, you don't need to uh, do an inscription. And you cannot change it, just like you cannot change your fingerprints. So a digital fingerprint, we believe, is a much better way of uh, basically uh, se the security solution of how to identify a polish diamond. Okay. So what we find today is uh, whether it is mined uh, diamond industry or mad diamond industry, everybody is talking about traceability, transparency, sustainability. So what are your views on uh, sustainability, in uh, especially uh, for the lab? So, look at it. I think if you look at the world today, uh, sustainability, uh, all the different aspects of ESG, is not something unique to the diamond industry. Uh, if you look at many different industries, you see there's a lot of focus on different ESG aspects uh, of uh, different industries. I think as a luxury industry, whether it be lab or whether it be uh, natural, the diamond industry has a significant importance of also um, responding to the needs of today's consumer, which uh, have put a lot bigger emphasis and a lot more focus on different ESG, ESG aspects. And, and ESG is, is not a single, it's not just the um, environment, it's not just energy, it's, it's, it's not just how you uh, take care of your uh, stakeholders, and employees, and governmental, it's, it's a lot of different aspects. And I think it's very important because today's consumer definitely uh, looks at this aspect uh, a lot more significantly than, than many years ago. Uh, companies today put a lot more importance, and therefore I think both in the lab zone segment as well as in the natural segment, it's an important factor. What I do think needs to be done on both sides uh, is uh, a lot more um, transparency, and um, there's a lot of talk about it, uh, um, 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 I would say uh, a lot of um, slogans uh, that is being used on the sustainability side, but not enough uh, um, ways to back up uh, the information. So I think there needs to be a lot of work to organize uh, how uh, people talk about sustainability, how people can actually prove and stand behind what they say, and then I think it will have a lot of value. Uh, but to that, there's a lot of um, talk about it, uh, but not, not, not uh, too much action. Um, so I think that's where we need to put a lot of focus, both on the laboratory side as well as on, on, on the natural side. Uh, and then say sustainability will have the impact that I think it can have. Okay. 
I am learning a lot of new things from you. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, just a dumb question. Uh, are you, you when I'm talking about the traceability of the animal, which is I think very important, uh, are you using blockchain in the uh, in, in the journey? How do you? So, uh, important to understand blockchain in the end is the technology uh, how to uh, store and access data. Digital ledger. Uh, so, are you using it? No, we're not using it because uh, in the end we don't see blockchain as a solution for traceability by itself. Okay. Uh, why? Because what is really critical in traceability is where the data comes from and how you're validating the data. Okay, so if I uh, put into a blockchain and say this diamond came in say from the natural side, this diamond came from Botswana, how do I know that this diamond came from? Who's checking that the information that I put into the digital ledger is correct? So we're focusing in our traceability solution on being able to verify the data. Okay, and the way that we do that is the data comes directly from so it's different technologies that are spread throughout the pipeline from the mines all the way down to the polished diamond. And our systems, which gather the data, are able to track that diamond to our systems without the involvement of the different entities on the pipeline. So we don't use any declarative data, it's all verifiable data. Now, once you have that verifiable data, you can now put it into a blockchain. We don't do that because that's not our forte, that's not where we focus in terms of our development, but we do work with blockchain platforms and integrate our traceability information into a blockchain platform. And then you can get the best of both worlds. So uh, our focus is mainly on the ability to use the data that is being created. Uh, we have about, uh, every year, over 100 million diamonds going through our technologies. Uh, so we have a lot of diamonds going through technologies, so a lot of data along that pipeline. And then utilizing that data to track that diamond um, uh, without having to get declarations from the different entities on pipeline is where our strength is in terms of traceability. Uh, but uh, as I said, utilizing the information in a third-party blockchain platform uh, is, uh, creates a, a synergy with our data. Okay. So now, uh, coming to the, uh, towards the end of our conversation, uh, see what has happened is uh, the Federal Trade Commission uh, in the US, uh, FTC has laid down guidelines uh, saying that if you are claiming your uh, diamond to be a sustainable or a green diamond, you need a third party uh, certification for sustainability. So do you think uh, there is an opportunity for Sarin? Uh, yes, I do think so, and I think it connects to your previous question with regards to traceability. Yes. Uh, so again, we're not an entity that uh, checks if you are a sustainable company. But uh, the ability to connect that specific diamond that is coming from a sustainable company or coming from a sustainable grower, I think that is definitely an opportunity because you can do that with technology, you can do that by utilizing the data that is created on the pipeline to track the diamond. And then it's easy to say this diamond was manufactured by yourself and you have sustainability accreditations, you can say that this diamond uh, was manufactured sustainably. It's sustainably. So I think our part in this uh, um, equation is being able to understand how uh, the diamond flows down the pipeline, the ability to connect that polished diamond to its source, whether it be a rough diamond or whether it be a, a, a CBD rough. And mm -hmm. um, I think that's where we can provide value. And also the second part is that uh, in, uh, because a lot of our technologies utilize throughout the manufacturing process, we know which, uh, what kind of stages the diamond has gone through, what kind of processes has gone through, and then we can work with third party companies that measure energy consumption and things like that in order to be able to track the energy consumption of the manufacturing process in a much more accurate way than you could do today. So I think we do have definitely a part that we can play over there, uh, but we cannot provide the, you know, all the different components of uh, that kind of solution. We need the third party companies that can really audit and check uh, the different sustainability parameters of the different entities along the pipeline. So uh, we discussed, uh, briefly mentioned actually, about the origin and the provenance. Yes. So, uh, coming from the marketing side, uh, what uh, stands apart in the, in the watch industry? If it is a Swiss watch, it has a, it commands a premium. Whether it is a Japanese uh, watch, of course, uh, it is quality wise there is no problem, but it fetches a lower uh, price premium in the market. Now, when I'm talking about the lab-grown diamond industry, uh, there is a demand from the organized retail chains in the U.S. Uh, where there is a advantage to companies like Diamond Foundry. You know, their USP is grown in the US. Yes. So, uh, I'm just sharing my opinion. 
Now, with uh, our Prime Minister's gesture of uh, presenting a Nagpurna diamond to the first lady of the United States, uh, made in, grown in India, is also, is also going to be, yeah, grown and manufactured in India, is also going to be a big story. And uh, that's where the opportunity uh, for a company like you, for example, uh, you have a, an association with Lukara Diamond, you know, tracing the entire chain. So I would like to ask you, are you contemplating uh, some kind of association with a uh, lab grown uh, a grower as well as a manufacturer, somebody uh, closer home, like you six? <laughs> so without going to which uh, finance we work with, uh, I'll say, okay, we, we work with a lot of different entities, both on the natural side as well as the lab grown. As I said, this week I've been spending uh, the large majority of the time meeting with growers, manufacturers from the LGD segment, and, and I think there's a lot of potential there for cooperation. And we're very, I, I believe, strong in cooperation. And that's why we see a lot of corporations that Serene is involved in with different segments of the industry, from the miners to manufacturers to retail. And, and I believe the, uh, the industry should have a lot more cooperation. Uh, therefore, uh, it's an open invitation to anyone who thinks that we can add value. Of course, this needs to be a win-win for, for the partner as well as for us. But I think there's a lot of value that can be created. And, and I'm sure that we'll see different corporations, different kinds of uh, um, uh, things like that. Going so Indian growers also have a hope of collaborating. Uh, 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 <laughs> not only they have a hope, the door is always open. Okay, great, great. So now my last question is a little sensitive. Uh, it is about intellectual property rights. Yes. I'm sure India is a very challenging <laughs> market for you. But fortunately, you have some, some, won some cases. Yeah. So what is your message to the industry? Okay, I think my message is that in order to develop technology, it costs a lot of money. R&D uh, has a significant spend. We spent over the last decade over $100 million in R&D. Uh, we are a technology company, therefore we have to uh, develop uh, new technologies. We always want to be at the cutting edge. And not all technology succeeds, so uh, you need to invest. Sometimes it succeeds, sometimes it uh, doesn't succeed. Um, and we need to continuously invest the uh, uh, R&D in order to bring and have that cutting edge. Um, I think that technology, uh, especially for the Indian diamond industry, has created a huge value, uh, whether it's our technology, it's other technologies. And therefore, I think in order to be able to continue investing, uh, when you move to utilizing uh, technology that infringes an IP, you damage the future of the industry. And therefore, I think that uh, maybe a short-term gain, but it's a, a long-term loss for the industry. Therefore, I would recommend to the industry that in order to maintain their cutting edge, uh, they need to be at the head and the, cut, the edge of technology, they need to have the best technology out there. And without companies like Sareem and others that invest significantly in R&D, uh, they'll lose their edge. So I think it's better to look long term. Uh, yes, it does cost more uh, technology that is developed and, uh, and, uh, and has to bear those costs of R&D. But in the long term, it sustains that uh, edge uh, for the industry. So uh, I think it's not a good business decision to uh, use pirated technologies because in the long term, uh, that is the industry, whether that be natural or lab. But uh, on, a, on a positive note, but Indian judiciary has helped you. It is impartial and yeah. I think you have won the yeah. first round. So it was very nice talking to you. And yeah. I hope to interact with you in future as well. It's been a pleasure. All the very best. Thank you very much. Great.